We now move on to question 6 on the January 2020 CSEC Math Reset Paper. And this is 6A. It says the radius of each circle in the rectangle WXYZ shown below is 7 centimeters. The circles fit exactly into the rectangle. And you can see from the diagram here, that's an exact fit. Part 1 says, show that the area of the rectangle is 2,352 square centimeters. Now, we know that area is defined as length times width. And it doesn't matter which side I call length or width. All right? Length and width are just names. So I need to figure out what the length is and I need to figure out what the width is. Now, this is what we are told. Each of the circle has a radius of 7 centimeters, which means that I know that each circle has a diameter of 14 centimeters. So all we need to do is to take this radius here of the first circle and complete it. So we're going to go right across. So what are we saying? We are saying that each of these circles has a radius of 7 which means that it has a diameter of 14 centimeter. So I'm going to have 14 here, 14 here, 14 here, and 14 here. Now, if I add up all of these diameters, it will actually give me the length of my rectangle. So I'm going to have 14 plus 14 plus, that's 14 times 4, which is equal to 56 centimeters. So that is my length. Now, I'm going to apply the same concept going vertically to get a width. Using the first circle, the diameter of the first circle is 14. So if I were to draw a line from here, straight through the centers, and this should have been a straight line, what I would actually end up with is here, we have 14 for the diameter here, 14 for the diameter here, and 14 for the diameter there. Which means that if I add up all three of them, I'm gonna end up with the width here, which is three times 14, which is going to give me 42 centimeters. So we know the length and we know the width. So we can say that the area is equal to length times width. The length we found out to be 56 centimeters. The width we found out to be 42 centimeters. 56 multiplied by 42 will give me 2,352 square centimeters. And that is exactly what we wanted. So we can say proven true. QED, quad error demonstrandum, meaning that which has been proven. We now move to part two of 6A, and it says calculate the area of the shaded region. This is important here that says take pi to be 22 over 7. Now we can come up with a formula for the area of the shaded region. Looking at the diagram, we have already found the area of the rectangle. Now what we have inside of the rectangle are blank circles so if we were to find the area of all the circles and we know the area of the rectangle already if we subtract them then we'll actually get the area in between which is the area of the shaded region so let us put our formula together now let us start with the area of the circles so let me say area of circles now we know the area of a circle is actually pi r squared but in this case, we don't just have a single circle. We have 4 by 3. We have 12 circles. So what I have to do is to multiply pi r square by 12. So this is going to become 12. Bear in mind that we said pi should be used as 22 over 7 times 22 over 7 multiplied by 7 squared. And all this can go inside of your calculator one time. This gives me 1,848 square centimeters good so we now have the area of all the circles and there are 12 of them so the area of the shaded region so let me say area of region would simply be equal to the area of the rectangle which we found earlier and that area was equal to 2352 square centimeters minus 1848 square centimeters so the area of the shaded region here would actually be equal to 504 square centimeters. And that is how we get the area of the shaded region. So we brought down the question and then we built it up. We now move to question 6b and it says the diagram below not drawn to scale shows triangle MNP in which angle MPN is equal to angle 
PMN, which is equal to 52 degrees, and MN is equal to 12.5 centimeters. Now we can automatically tell that this is an isosceles triangle because these two opposite angles or these two base angles are equal. We know it can be equilateral because each angle would have to be 60 degrees. So that is out of the picture. Now I know that once these two angles are equal, the sides opposite the angles are also equal. So if this side is 12.5 centimeters, then up here is also 12.5 centimeters as well. So the first question, state the type of triangle shown above. We know it's an isosceles triangle. All right. Now determine the value of angle P and M. The angles, the sum of the angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So if I want angle P and M, I would simply have to add the two angles that I know and subtract it from 180. So I would have 180 minus 52 plus 52, which this would boil down to give me 76 degrees. Now do not leave off the degrees without the degrees is not an angle. So please remember to put that on. Now calculate the area of triangle MNP. Now typically we know that the most common way to find the area of a triangle is half base times height. But we have to remember that when angles and sides are involved, we have an X formula. Now this formula is area equal a half AB sine theta. Now what does A and B represent? So A and B represents the sides between the sides that bone any given angle that you're using. Alright, so we have 12.5 over here and 12.5 over here. So the angle theta must be the angle in between these two sides, which is 76 degrees. So the sides must be adjacent to the angle. So this is going to be a half 12.5 times 12.5 times the sine of 76 degrees. Now all this can go inside of your calculator one time. This is 75.8 square centimeters. So remember that there are two formulas. Are there more than two formulas that you can use to find the area of a triangle depending on what you have? If you were given all three sides, we'd probably have to use Heron's formula.